Friday's running at Suzuka couldn't have been a better example of racing at the iconic circuit if it tried to be. Logan Sargent running wide in Alex Albon's repaired Williams led to a massive crash before the rain came down, essentially ending running for the day. With time to kill and nothing to watch on track, attention instead turned to the driver's market and the especially exciting search for a successor to Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes seat. The possibility of Max Verstappen being tempted away from Red Bull will stay every team's hand until they're sure the reigning world champion won't be joining them, but it seems like Mercedes might be turning their attention elsewhere. Like the great eye of Sauron, Toto Wolff has surveyed Middle-earth and found himself a ring-bearer in the most surprising of places, a certain someone who's been living in a hole for the past year and a half. But is Sebastian Vettel really coming back to Formula 1? Well, let's find out. Max Verstappen set the fastest time in Friday practice at the Japanese Grand Prix as the second session was rendered useless by the weather. Intermittent light rain at Suzuka meant the track was too wet for dry weather tires and too dry for wets, and only three drivers set lap times. In the first session, Verstappen led Perez by 0.181 seconds, with Sainz, the winner in Australia, 0.213 seconds off the pace. Mercedes George Russell and Lewis Hamilton were fourth and fifth, ahead of the second Ferrari of Charles Leclerc and Aston Martin's Fernando Alonso. McLaren's Oscar Piastri topped the second from Mercedes Lewis Hamilton. They, along with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, were the only drivers to set a flying lap on slick tyres as the track dried slightly at the end of the session. With a number of teams bringing upgrades to the fourth race of the season, and Mercedes not being one of them, it was a bit of a shock to many people to see them splitting the Ferraris for fourth and fifth in FP1. Sky Sports' Anthony Davison pointed to Mercedes' relatively strong performance in the opening session as a huge shock. He didn't anticipate the Silver Arrows being fast enough to split the Ferraris and keep pace set of Verstappen just about in sight. Russell in fourth was only 0.474 seconds off Verstappen's fastest time, 13 thousandths of a second faster than his teammate. Significantly, Davidson says both Russell and Hamilton seemed more at ease behind the wheel than they did last time out. The drivers look more comfortable on track than they did in Melbourne, said Davidson, who routinely carries out simulator work for the team. The Mercedes splitting the two Ferraris, and only four and a half tenths away from a heavily upgraded Red Bull, with Verstappen putting a sweet lap in, for me, that's the surprise of the season. Clearly, Anthony Davidson hasn't been watching the rest of the season. Mercedes' weekends so far in 2024 have been characterized by a competitive Friday before their pace goes off a cliff compared to the rest of the grid on Saturday and Sunday. On track, Mercedes haven't really turned up at the races this season, but off track, there's been a lot of attention around the team. Hamilton's shocking decision to ditch the Silver Arrows after 12 seasons caught everyone off guard before the season began. But since then, Ferrari's strong performance and Mercedes' lack of pace has made the decision seem a no-brainer. It has, however, left Mercedes in an awkward spot as they look for a driver to replace the most successful one the sport has ever seen. Not an easy task by any measure. Amidst the speculation over who will replace Hamilton, Russell has shared his excitement for life at Mercedes post-Lewis. Change is sometimes good, he remarked, celebrating the fresh start Hamilton's exit might herald. He's done so many great things, he's been here for so long, and we're kind of stuck at the moment. So I think this change is positive for him and positive for Mercedes because it gives us the possibility of starting from a clean sheet. Who shares that clean sheet with George is the big question, though. Talk All Week has been about the potential return of four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel to the sport, as both he and Toto Wolff had admitted to discussing the empty Mercedes seat. Neither have said that the move won't happen, which is fueling the fire at the moment. In Suzuka, Toto Wolff admitted he can never discount Sebastian Vettel from the running to replace Lewis Hamilton. The retired Vettel's name has reappeared after he admitted a comeback to F1 depended on the package that he might be offered. Sebastian is someone you can never discount, Mercedes boss Wolff said at the Japanese Grand Prix. His track record is phenomenal. Sometimes, maybe taking a break is also good to evaluate what is important for you to refine your motivation. We haven't taken the decision yet, it's not something we plan to do in the next few weeks. The fact there is even a decision to take is a shock. 
Wolf admitting that Sebastian is a serious option is such a surprise after the four-time world champion retired in 2022 after a few disappointing seasons at Aston Martin. At the time, he seemed exhausted and completely done with Formula 1. The change in his mood after that Instagram video that announced his retirement was remarkable. He did say toward the end of that season that he would consider a return at some point for an opportunity to race at Suzuka again. Toto Wolff went on to say that he wants to keep his options open, presumably in case he can convince Max Verstappen to make the move to Mercedes. The driver market is very dynamic. Some of the really good guys are about to sign for the other teams, and we want to continue to have these discussions. We have the options open, but it's much too early to commit to a driver, either very young or experienced. Don't want to say old. But the next few months will give us clues. The links with Vettel have evolved very quickly this week, in a very similar way to how the story of Hamilton moving to Ferrari developed before that was officially announced. After retiring from F1 at the end of 2022 after 16 seasons and four world titles, Seb had already been loosely linked with a possible return to some form of racing, before he said in interviews this week that he was indeed thinking about a possible comeback to the top level. He said that he remained in close contact with Wolf and other team principals. Sebastian was almost universally loved by fans when he left Formula 1, and a return would be welcomed by many. But the question remains, would he actually want to rejoin the bloated Formula 1 calendar? He left an Aston Martin team that finished down in 7th in the Constructors' Championship, but a top seat could re-energize him. At 36, Vettel is still younger than Hamilton, who is 39, and Alonso, who is 42, and he's also the same age as Haas driver Nico Hülkenberg. Bernie Collins, who worked as the chief strategist at Aston Martin during Vettel's time at the team, suspects Vettel would be drawn to the idea of returning to the front of the F1 grid. Collins said, I think he would. All of them have that drive within them, and all of them have been doing this for the past X number of years, not even their F1 career, their karting career, their junior career. They've been doing it for so long. He stepped away a year and a half ago. Unless you very quickly fill that void, I imagine there's that slight pullback. If someone says, you can get in this reasonably fast car for a year, he'd be like, yeah. One of the reasons he gave for retiring was that he wanted to prioritize his family and his children. His announcement of his retirement triggered the driver's market that season, and before he did, there wasn't any real way for him to move up the grid. He can't have known that Aston Martin would have a podium-worthy car the following season, but if he had known, it would be interesting to know if he would have taken the same decision. Bernie Collins seemed to think that if he was given a car that was competitive, then he would be willing to live the F1 lifestyle again. Unfortunately, he was racing in an Aston Martin. The car wasn't performing as expected. He was trying to prioritize his home life, his kids. If you were then given an opportunity to get in a car that you know is going to hit the ground running, maybe. Bringing Sebastian back to Formula 1 for a few seasons would fit with Mercedes' long-term plan as well. They only offered Hamilton a two-year contract last season because they knew they had some very promising talent coming through their youth system. Andrea Kimi Antonelli will be getting a run-out in the 2021 Mercedes F1 car at the Red Bull Ring very soon, so Mercedes can give him a taste of a good F1 car and get a better idea of what his talent might look like at the top level. Having Sebastian help develop the new era of F1 cars, ready for Antonelli to step in when he has a little more experience under his belt, would be the ideal strategy for Mercedes. Assuming they can't convince Max to drive for them, that is. Do you think we could actually see Seb back in an F1 car next year? Or are he and Mercedes just playing with the F1 media? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.